Welcome to the Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast with Michael Lafito, where top luxury agents reveal their best practices, plus interviews with real estate industry influencers, thought leaders, and luxury marketing experts. You'll come away from each episode with new strategies and tactics to dominate high-end homes in any market. And now for the latest episode of Luxury Listing Specialist. Here's your host, luxury real estate expert, coach, and trainer, Michael Lafito. All right, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Luxury Listing Specialist podcast. I'm your host, Michael Lafito. You're in the right spot if you're looking to work smarter, not harder. If you're looking to increase your average sale price, and if you're looking to break into luxury or dominate luxury, again, this is the perfect podcast, whether you're a newer agent. Today, I'm actually having a guest on. She's been licensed for only a month. Or you're a seasoned veteran just looking for a, something different, a, a unique approach, a, a different perspective. Maybe you're in a place today in your business that you heard something I'm going to cover today previously, but maybe it didn't resonate the same way it's going to resonate today. So again, I'm your host, Michael Lafito. I am the founder of the Lux designation known as Luxury Listing Specialist. You can find out more about that by going to LuxuryListingSpecialist.com. And if you do get something from this podcast or previous podcasts, please leave us a review, whether it be in iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, we could always use more reviews, just like if you did a great job for a client, you could always use more re reviews for your real estate business. So could we. And if you've read our book, Luxury Listing Specialist on Amazon, leave us a review there. All right, I'm really excited to bring on today's guest. Uh, she uh, has been licensed, as I mentioned. For, she's a new, newly licensed agent. She's with Keller Williams for about a month only licensed. Ruby Goings. Ruby, are you there? Yes. Hi, Mike. I'm here. Well, thank you again for taking the time. Uh, you were on a, a training of ours previously. and. You, uh -huh. you, you left a bunch of nuggets, things that you learned from the training, and we had kind of a contest to whoever got the most ahas or takeaways uh, with the group uh, got a, a free coaching call, and you agreed to be on our podcast, so we're going to make it a win-win because things I'm going to cover today with you, guaranteed most, if not you know, majority of our listeners might have similar type questions, so we want to make it a win-win for everybody. And, uh, and so you sent over to me four questions, which are going to be the basis for today's uh, show. And the first question, I'll get right into things. What makes one a fit to sell luxury homes? Is it a look, knowledge, specific broker office that you're with, uh, you know, name of a brokerage? Is it an image? And um, am I missing out anything there, Ruby? That was a pretty detailed question. Am I, am I missing anything from that? No, no, that's pretty much it. What, what makes one a fit to be a luxury seller, a luxury home seller? Yeah, that's basically it. And that, that's, a, that's a great question. And, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about breaking into selling high-end and luxury homes. And, and again, just let me repeat for those of you that maybe this is your first podcast or maybe you haven't seen me present before, but everybody defines luxury homes differently. Some, some brands, some ma larger franchises define it as a million dollars and above. Some define it as the top 10% for your market. It could be very difficult sometimes to define a luxury priced home whether you're based in Texas and Houston and Dallas, Austin, doesn't matter what part of the country, what part of the world you're in, luxury is different. It's defined differently. And we personally define it for our course, for our designation. We say luxury homes are homes that are priced at three times the average sale price for that given market. So in your given market, if the average sale price is 150,000, 150 times three would be 450. So 450000 or above would be luxury. So, again, you're a newer agent. Uh, you, you, you uh, Ruby, are with Keller Williams, and, and, and your market center might define it differently than we do for our class. But bottom line is we define luxury for our show, for our podcast listeners, as three times the average sale price for your given market. Now, Ruby, a, a price point below luxury 
is what we call high-end homes. High-end homes are priced at two times the average sale price. So there's usually a little bit more high-end homes than luxury homes. But bottom line, you're on here because you want to hit the ground running. You want to you know, learn uh, proper techniques and systems yeah. now as a newer agent than developing bad habits or developing bad mindset, right? Many times what Absolutely. we're going to be talking because about today will be... Yeah, if I can sell a luxury home, I can sell anything. So why not sell anything? That is... Oh, that, 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 that's absolutely right. If you're going to sell a home, might as well sell one that's a little bit more expensive. But listen, at the end of the day, I know, Ruby, we've talked offline. You want to help people. You want to help people, whether they ent- they're entry-level homes, you know, starter mm-hmm. homes, average-priced mm-hmm. homes. So let me make sure I not only say that about Ruby, but uh, that's mm-hmm. my philosophy as well, as well. So if somebody's looking to rent a home, well, I might not help them, but I'll have a team member. I'll make sure we take care of them. So we don't discriminate to anybody based on the price point or what have you. So that right. I want to make sure we address the elephant in the room. We're here to help people on this show. We're here to help agents. We're here to help buyers and sellers. With that being said, we do specialize in the upper end and the luxury. And so that's what today's topic is going to be about. So getting back to your original question. I wish I wish I had that easy button and I could tell you it's a simple answer, Ruby, but it's not. So it's kind of a multi-pronged approach when it comes to what do you need to do to to break into and get in front of those type of clientele, whether they be buyers, sellers, uh, you know, investors. But what uh-huh. do you as an agent need to do to break into and get in front of more of those high net worth individuals and it's not an easy answer. It takes time, but I'm going to give uh-huh. you some shortcuts as if I got to sell a high-end or luxury home, you know, in the next 90 days, Mike, what would I need to do? And so I'm going to answer okay. it in, in those terms. Is that fair enough, Ruby? I'll take it. All right. Number one, obviously, whether you're during a pandemic or post-pandemic, there are some limitations on what you can do face-to-face, different parts of the world are in more of a lockdown than, than others. But so let's assume that you you broke a leg or you're afraid of going out in public because of uh, the virus, you know, then you're going to have to do a good job with video marketing. Video marketing would be educational videos, you know, put, mm-hmm. putting, creating a YouTube channel, doing Facebook live videos, educational videos on maybe why selling a home during the holidays is a good, is a good strategy versus waiting till next springtime when everybody else puts their home on the market. That okay. might be an educational video uh, just off the top of my head, Ruby, for a potential seller. Should you put your home on the market during the holidays or wait till next spring like everybody else? So that that could be a video where you don't have to get in front of people, but you do a Facebook live, maybe at a broker open house where you're, you're at a, another agent's open house and you get their authorization to shoot a video there. That could be a video you do. That could be a video you do at your, in your house, uh, at your office. And so uh-huh. the first thing I would advocate for anybody to sell high end and luxury homes would be to position yourself as an expert. Position okay. yourself as an expert. You know, there's an old adage, generalists get paid, specialists get wealthy. And so that's part of the reason we created our luxury listing specialist courses to help agents become specialists. And, you know, the consumer is savvy. They're going to Google you. They're going to look you up on social media. And so you want to have a strong online presence even if you're only licensed for one year, uh, one month, excuse me, not even mm-hmm. one year, Ruby, what can you do in one month, in one month, from, from one month from today, what can you mm-hmm. do over that one month to help position yourself as a leading expert? And so there's a lot of content out there for real estate agents. Like one of my good friends over at Keeping Current Matters, uh, for example, the Harneys, Steve and Bill Harney, you can go to trykcm.com forward slash luxury. If, if you go to trykcm.com forward slash luxury for only $25 a month, you will become a member 
and they will provide you some great content for buyers, for sellers, and then and then time sensitive topics. So for example, in October or November, they release statistics for November based on the National Association of Realtors. So you can take some of the content they provide and just talk about it in a video and use good visuals that they provide. You don't have to create slides. You don't have to create visuals. They provide it. And then once a month, you can provide great content to buyers, to sellers, okay. or just a market update. And so uh-huh. that would be my first tip for you is, is start to become comfortable with video. Now, Ruby, you don't have to be this great editor or anything. You can literally, just like we're doing right now, unscripted. Uh-huh. We're not going to edit out a bunch of things here. We're just right. having a conversational in tone, talking about why, you know, and, and you're from um, Clear Lake, why the Clear Lake market? What What's the market like in Clear Lake overall? And uh-huh. so that's my first tip for you is, is become comfortable on video, whether it be you're recording a video at your office, at your home, yeah. whether you're doing a Facebook live video mm-hmm. and, and you mm-hmm. can Google how to do Facebook live videos, Ruby. It's, it's not, have okay. you done one? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> not that I'm shy. I just haven't had anything that I thought was important to put on there at this time, but yeah. I guess this will be it. This, this would be it. So the other thing mm-hmm. you can do Ruby is, um, do you know what days of the, the week um, in your market that other real estate agents have what you call broker open houses? Do you know what day of the week they have those? The open houses, broken open houses? I'm thinking it's, all, uh, it's during the weekday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, correct. So the broker open house is usually weekday, and then the public open houses are usually weekends. On the weekends, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So let's just, for the sake of this conversation, Say Thursdays in your market center because you can find out. You can ask somebody at, at Keller, you know, at your Keller Williams office, or mm-hmm. um, and they can tell you. But let's just say next Thursday there's a, a couple broker open houses in your area, and particularly in the price points that are on the upper end. So you might have to okay. you might have to go to where the business is for those upper okay. end and luxury. So I was coaching an agent out of the Orlando market. And her average sale price was lower than she wanted to be. So she had to, she had to drive a couple towns over. She had to drive 15 to 20 minutes and, and attend other people's open houses in Uh that upper price point. And that's okay. You you might have to go to where the, go to where the, the, the money is, so to speak, and go to some of those upper end markets. You know, when I broke into luxury here in Chicago land, you know, I, I, had to go to an office. I physically hung my office that was 35, 40 minutes away, 45 minutes away. And, and that's, then I joined the chamber of commerce over there. And that was, that's going to be another big point I'm going to suggest for you. And again, during a pandemic, there's not as many in-person events than there are when we, when things are normal, but you would probably join a chamber in one of those marketplaces in one of those towns in one of those communities that is uh-huh. known for a lot of upper end and high end homes. Okay. Does that make sense? So you go to a chamber, you network with other business people, you let them know what you do. Uh-huh. And I've never met you, Ruby, but I've talked to you a couple times now on the phone, and and you got a very nice demeanor about yourself. You carry oh, yourself. You. You're absolutely welcome. You carry yourself as a very trustworthy woman, and those are great qualities. In a, in a real estate agent, and they're even more important qualities when dealing with high-end and luxury homes. Mm-hmm. So you have, you have the foundation, Ruby, which is, you can't teach that. There's some people that are, I had a former uh, gentleman that was in my office, and, and, and he, he just, he came across as a salesman, you know, and, and he rubbed okay. people the wrong way, and, and, and he, he kind of just w- couldn't be trusted. And, and, and so some people are that way and, and you can't unfortunately um, take spots off of a, a, a leopard or leopard, stripes right. off of a tiger. They're, they're, they're a certain right. way. And right. so you have that foundation and, and, and a lot of our listeners have that foundation that takes you trustworthy. You know, I, I want to share with you a quote from a Nobel Peace Prize winner, and he's written a lot of books as well, named Daniel Kamen. Uh-huh. And 
and this is great for all the listeners. Daniel once said, people would rather do business, do business with someone they like rather than someone they don't. Even mm-hmm. if that likable person, again, hear the second point here. Even if that likable person is offering a lower quality or lower quality product or service at a mm-hmm. higher price. Mm-hmm. So let me say that again. I'm going to repeat that. People would rather do business with someone they like rather than someone they don't. Even if that likable person is offering a lower quality of product or product at a higher price. Now, of course, I teach agents to offer a higher quality product and service, and then you don't have to lower your fee, okay? Mm -hmm. But people would rather do business, be likable, right? Um, Theodore Roosevelt, former president, once said, people don't care how much you know until they know you care. People don't care how much you know until they know you care. You can be the smartest person in the room, but if you're not likable, Mm -hmm. you know, then then you're not going to build rapport. Your conversion rate is going to be low. But if you're a likable person and you attract people with with honey and you're nice, you know, Mm -hmm. you might not have the best website. You might not have the best track record, but you will convert. So I want to get back to your original question. Your original question is, I'm, I'm new. I'm only licensed. What can I do? Number one is before you even do videos, before you even go to these, these, um, these chamber of commerce events, is grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. I want you to be confident and you can't fake confidence. So one of the things you can do, Ruby, to grow Uh your confidence is grow your knowledge by listening to our podcast or attending that Uh event that that you did previously a couple Uh weeks back, okay? Uh Uh Um, Uh There's a lot of great Zoom trainings out there. There's various Facebook groups. You can read books. There's stuff online. Okay, Okay. grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. That's number one. Number two is when you're confident, then you start creating educational videos or you go to these, you go to the chamber events and you start networking people because if you're confident, you believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you step out of your comfort zone. If you step out of your comfort zone, that might mean for you going to a chamber event 20 minutes away. That might be going Mm -hmm. to a broker open house for a price point of a home you've never stepped into, let alone list, Mm -hmm. let alone ever sold. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is Mm -hmm. really where the magic happens, Ruby, is you want to step Mm -hmm. out of your comfort zone. Okay. Now that might sound great. Okay, Mike. Well, that's great. But give me some examples of stepping out of your comfort zone. Well, that, that brings me to the chamber. That brings me to looking at next Thursday's, using that as an example, next Thursday's list of broker open houses. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's just say there's a, I'm just going to throw out a price point. Have you ever been in your, and in, in, I'm, I'm surprising you, you're not prepared for this question. Okay. Have you ever been at a, in a $2.5 million home to your, your, your best of knowledge, Ruby? No, only online, <laughs> only virtual okay. tours. And I can't wait to be inside of one. All right, so let's just use 2.5 for this example. Let's just say next next week there's a 2.5 million dollar broker open house. This would be a perfect example of you stepping out of your comfort zone because you've never stepped in the home. And and I what I I don't want to happen to you, Ruby. What happened to an agent in Atlanta? You see, mm-hmm. a year ago I was at a conference in New York. It was an Inman conference in New York. Every year I go, and somebody introduced me to someone and said, oh, she's a top agent in Atlanta. Oh, and Michael's a a top luxury consultant. He's got this designation, written books. And we started talking. And shortly after we're talking, she said, man, I wish I would have met you a few months ago. She said, I had the opportunity to list a PGA golfer's home. It was for Mm -hmm. sure because it was was a referral. So it was like really mine to lose. And it was a $10 million home. But I didn't Mm -hmm. go on the appointment because... I haven't sold anything above X. I forgot what X was, but she told me, okay. just call 2.5 million or a million. Okay. And I was worried that they were going to ask me about this and they were going to ask me. And the what if, she was what ifing. She goes, what if they asked me this? What if, what if, what if? And so okay. I know there's a lot of our listeners that what if themselves as well. And so I don't want you to what if yourself. And so part mm-hmm. of the reason you grow your knowledge and your confidence grows, Ruby, 
is when you step out of your comfort zone. And so if you go on that Thursday, next Thursday, that broker opened on that two and a half million dollar listing, or excuse me, mm-hmm. that, that somebody else's listing, you'll, mm-hmm. you'll walk through it and you'll look and you'll see materials that you have no idea. Is that a limestone fireplace? What kind of wood is that? I have no idea. And that's okay. But you'll kick, mm-hmm. the, you'll kick, the, you'll kick the baseboards, you'll open the doors, and guess what? It's still at mm-hmm. the end of the day, it's a roof. And there's a bedroom and there's multiple bedrooms. Yeah, there might be an extra zero on the square footage of homes that you're used to, but guess what? Mm-hmm. It's still a house. And it comes back to that Daniel Kamen quote. People want to do business with someone they like and they trust. Okay, like Theodore Roosevelt and Daniel Kamen said. And so be likable. You'll walk out of there, maybe overwhelmed, but you also have a little bit sense of confidence saying, heck, if they interviewed me, I would be honest with them. I haven't sold any homes above X, Mr. Seller or Mrs. Seller, but you know what? If you want an agent with high integrity, that's going to have a great work ethic. And I have a lot of resources at my brokerage. You're, you're with mm-hmm. Keller Williams, but fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's Douglas Elman, Cobalt Banker, Remax, fill in the blank. Okay. We have a lot of resources mm-hmm. and we will make sure that we do everything possible to get your home sold. And so I'm, giving you a couple scenarios, Ruby, but if you did have that opportunity to go on a big appointment, you probably would want to bring a seasoned veteran agent from your office, maybe an, okay. a luxury agent from your office. And, okay. you know, watch them and, then, and, and, and you could pay them a referral fee. You know, Hey, you come on with me, I'll let you co-list it. Or maybe you let them be the listing agent and you take a 50% referral fee and you learn from them like you're an apprentice. Hi, it's Michael Lafito here with a quick break from the podcast. If you are committed to increasing your average sale price and you want to work smarter, not harder, then you want to visit LuxuryListingSpecialist.com for more information on the Lux designation along with some free resources. And now let's get back to the show. Number two, where do you find people with luxury homes to list and they're looking to buy? That was your second question, correct? Yes. yes. That, that's a great question. So networking. So remember I told, told you about go to the chamber. If you go to the chamber, this one example, um, you go to the chamber. And when I say go to the chamber, I don't just show up at the chamber of commerce, but the chamber has events. Okay. And, and they have networking events. And sometimes they're at different locations and you meet other business owners. You might meet the business owner that has the uh, that installs high end studio movies, uh, you know, home theaters, and and you get to know them, and and you exchange cards, and and then you might have this conversation that I recommend all real estate agents have is, hey, just keep me in mind. You might know somebody that's thinking about buying or selling, and sometimes they need a second opinion. Maybe Ruby, they, their personalities don't gel with their current agent, and just keep me in mind. If you know of anybody that maybe uh, you, you hear them, they're, they're, they're maybe unhappy a little bit or they're not getting the activity on their home if their home is listed or maybe the only time they hear from their real estate agent is when they want to lower the price. If, if you ever hear of anybody and those scenarios pop up or you hear of anybody that needs a second opinion or they're, they're buying, please keep me in mind. Here's a couple of my cards. Okay, that sounds good. You hear that second opinion conversation, Ruby? I've just planted the seed when I meet people and I build rapport. And of course, that's not the first thing I do. It's not even the second, but you build rapport, you become likable. But when the time comes and it's like, well, what do you do, Ruby? Again, don't lead with what you do. Ask them what they do. Well, just like when you open a door for somebody going into the grocery store, okay, hopefully the person that you open it for says thank you, and they might feel obligated to keep it open for the next person. That's called reciprocity. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you if I start the conversation with you, Ruby, and say, well, what do you do for a living, and what what's your ideal client, and how can I help you? You know, there's a lot of takers in this world that, that conversation ends, and they don't even ask about you and what you do, but hopefully... Yeah. For every one of those, Ruby, you're going to get two or three or four that, that are high-integrity people, and, and they want to reciprocate. And they say, well, Ruby, what do you do? And instead of just saying, oh, I'm a realtor with Keller Williams, you, you say, hey, I, I'm a licensed real estate agent. I help people buying a home, 
selling a home. Many times I'm, I'm like the second opinion person where maybe someone refers me, but they, 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 they already have a preferred real estate agent. So many times I'm like the second person. So if you know of anybody, Ruby, that's thinking about buying or selling, or they, they're thinking about selling in a year and they want an opinion on what improvements they need to make, or, Hey, should we refinance or should we, you know, should we move up because rates are so low? Just keep me in mind. Let me give you a couple cards. Boom. Sounds, sounds easy. Sounds good. Okay. And, and, and again, I've done this so many times, so it, it's easier once you do it a couple times, but practice it, role play, you know, talk in front of a mirror and pretend like you're talking to me or whatever. And, and you'll, you'll, you'll be more confident. You'll, you'll found, you'll sound more polished. It will come across as more sincere and not salesy. The third question you asked is other than listing, um, or HAR. Okay. So HAR, are you talking about Houston association of realtors? Where, where we find our listings of homes. As, uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you say, where do you, where, where do you draw traffic to high end and a luxury home? So, so first off, we're making some assumptions here and those are some real big assumptions and you know what they say when you assume, but, but, but it's, it's really important that you as a marketing agent, you position the home most effectively. When I say position, I mean, amazing photos. You know what trends are, you know what buyers are looking for. Literally, I, I, I have a upcoming ten and a half million dollar listing. Now I know that's in some markets that's nothing in Beverly Hills and some of those the Hamptons, but in mm-hmm. Chicagoland, there's only been a ten million one ten million dollar sale in the last two years, only one. And there's currently nine on the market. So if one sells every two years, that means okay. there's eighteen 18 years of inventory, Ruby, above 10, 10 million in about 18 years. That's not good. When there's seven or more months of inventory, we call that a buyer's market. There's 18 okay. years. So we literally were there nine hours, for, uh, over nine hours for the photo and video shoot. And okay. the guy took a couple hundred photos. And guess what? A couple of the angles I didn't like, I wanted him to reshoot it. So we were there again yesterday for a couple hours. So we got over 11 hours into this yeah. already. And my point is, if it were easy, everybody would do it. And so True. I take our time. We make sure the photo quality is great, but also I want the, I know what the, the, the center, the focal points of each of the rooms are. And so if you've done a great job and you have amazing photos and descriptions are great, we're basically in a Tinder industry, Ruby. So Tinder is a dating app, and if people think someone's handsome or good-looking, they swipe right. <laughs> if they don't, they swipe left. Okay, I'm right. married happily, but I, I have a buddy that's single, and he's filled me in on this. So my point is, we are in a, a Tinder industry for selling homes. If people like a home, they'll swipe right. They'll know right away. If they don't, they'll swipe left. So you got to have amazing photos. That's even more yeah. important than description. But assuming you have all those things, then how do you get it properly exposed and to the right demographic? Well, you really got to work with title companies and your local real estate board and your local MLS to try to determine where buyers are coming from, from into your market. In other words, what feeder markets, we call those migration patterns or feeder markets. Feeder means where are people moving from to your market? I just had on our luxury lunch and learn program, a guy named John Mark Mitchell. He's, he's out of uh, uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And he knows his feeder market. He's got a lot of people from New York coming down. They don't like the taxes, but they, they, they're coming down to North Carolina. And, and so John Mark Mitchell needs to have good relationships with real estate agents in New York but he also has to do some marketing. Maybe it's through Facebook. You can do an ad. He can create an ad in North Carolina and he can target people that are on Facebook in New York. And so you really got to know your feeder market. So that's a little bit more of an advanced question. I would really like you to focus more on your mindset and being more knowledgeable and more confident and then getting in front of others at, at other people's broker open houses. And when you go to other people's broker broker open houses, then you can ask them ahead of time, 
Hey, Ruby, I'm planning on attending your broker open house next Thursday for that $2.5 million listing. It's absolutely stunning. What is the website that you created for that home, Ruby? Just give me give me a name. Oh, 123elmstreet.info. Okay, Ruby, would you mind uh, when I attend next Thursday, if I uh, maybe took a couple photos and, and did a, a, a video while I was there and I would make sure, Ruby, that I, I tagged you as a listing agent and I, I gave the website of of one, two, three, you know, mainstreet.info. Um, and I plugged the, the website and I would not mislead. I would clearly say you're the listing agent. Would you have any problem if I did that? I, my goal is Ruby to, to somebody in my database says, Oh, that's a cool home. I'd like to see it. I, I'm, I'm hoping I can bring you the buyer. Would that be okay, Ruby? Okay. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. That sounds good and fair. That's you see what fair. I just did there? Because the most listened mm-hmm. to radio station that listing agents listen to, unfortunately, is usually WIIFM, Ruby, and that stands for what's in it for <laughs> me if, or them yeah. in that case. And so they're trying to figure out, I'm doing this broker open. I don't know Ruby that well. Why would she want to come and do a, a video? And so you got to address the elephants in the room, like the hotels.com, Captain Obvious. The hotel in the room, the, 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 the elephant in the room is that they might think, hmm, is Ruby trying to poach my listing or is she trying to mislead and, and say that this is her listing? So you have to go above and beyond to make sure at this broker open, uh, to, you disclose and get their authorization and, in other words, the listing agent to shoot a video at theirs. And then most people, though, they watch these videos on mute. They, they're, at their, they're maybe not at their cubicle anymore, but they're at home. They're flipping through while the ball game's on. And so now all of a sudden, Ruby, they see on your Facebook Live that you're at a, a nice house. So right. that's pretty cool. I, I forgot Ruby was in real estate. And then guess what, Ruby? Next week, they see you at another broker open, but they don't realize it. They just see you at another nice house. And then all of a sudden, you're top of mind awareness, Ruby. And then just subconsciously, people in your database and your sphere and people that know you, like you, and trust you, they see you doing a lot of stuff with video and, and at other people's houses or at real estate events or networking, and now you're top of mind awareness, and now you kind of become part of part. You're, you're part of word. what they a think of. Name. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, I said a household yeah. name. <laughs> Ruby the realtor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a- absolutely. It's called top of mind awareness. There's something part of your brain called the reticulator activator. That's the mm-hmm. part of your brain that heightens your awareness. Uh, certain things. Pregnant women, notice other pregnant women. Yeah. You, you buy a handbag as a woman, you see other women with your same handbag. You know, you, uh-huh. you, you drive a certain car and, and you see that car all over the ro- road. Well, you want to be, you want other people's reticulator activators on when they hear someone thinking about buying or selling real estate in your market, in your market center area, that guess what? Ruby Goings, is top of mind awareness. Like I see her all over the place. How's that sound? That sounds great. That sounds like a plan. I'm writing so, all this no, down. Yeah. And, and we're going to record, we're recording this so you can listen to it as many times as you want. And like I said, if you guys are getting something from this, please shoot us a note. My email is michael at marketing luxury group.com. Michael at marketing luxury group.com. Leave us a note. If you're listening to this, Leave us a review. We, we could use more five-star reviews. We're trying to raise the bar for the industry. I'm trying to help Ruby, but I'm not just talking to Ruby. I'm talking to all of you that might have similar type scenarios, similar questions. You could be a late licensed agent for 20 years, but you've never gone on that $2.5 million listing. I want you to break down those barriers. I call them limiting beliefs. You know, Babe Ruth once said, never let the fear of striking out you know, ne- never let the fear of striking out, you know, uh, 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 pr- prevent you from going up to, uh, to, b- to bat, you know? So in other mm-hmm. words, many people, they never get out of the dugout, Ruby, because they're afraid of striking out. And what will others say? Well, guess what? If I strike out, my mentality is, man, the next time up, I'm getting a hit. You know, I just got mm-hmm. done coaching my kids baseball, little league baseball, literally. Uh, it's my fifth and fourth grader, and they won the fall ball championship. They upset the number one undefeated team. And we have one kid on our team that didn't get a hit all summer during and, and all fall ball. We played over 20 games. The guy never got one hit. 
And the last really? night before our championship game, his name is Elijah. The last night before our championship game, we, we, we made sure every, every kid on the team got it, got it up to bat and got a hit off of a pitcher or the coach. If the pitcher was struggling, the coach pitched. But we want every kid before the championship game, you know, the night before, to get a base hit, to hit the ball at least, to grow, to grow their confidence going yeah. into the championship game. And, and this Elijah, it was the longest at bat. It probably was 15 minutes for one kid. Kids were getting ornery. But every time he missed, I was like the little engine that could. I was not pitching, but I was off to the side. I said, you're going to get a hit. You're going to get a hit. You're going to get a hit. I just plugged that in his head. He's going to get a hit. He's going to get a hit. Yeah. And then he finally got a hit. He finally got a hit. Well, we need that just like that little engine that could too, Ruby. You need that and I do. I'm going to get this next I thing. Agree. I'm going to get this next fire. You know, and, and we got to yeah. build ourselves up because guess what? You hang out with nine negative dead broke people, you're bound to be the tenth. So we need to surround ourselves with positive people. You're, that, that are going to support you, Ruby, and yeah. are going to build you up, and you build others up, okay? Yeah, Mike, that's pretty good. I mean, the only way that you learn whether or not you can hit that ball is if you take a swing, and if you never take a swing, you don't know if you're going to get a hit. So I'm going to if start you don't take a, Amen. And guess what? Most people don't even step into that batter's box because of the what ifs. Yeah. What if I get hit by a pitch? What will people think? I don't want to embarrass myself. What if I, what if, what if, just like most people like the, the agent down in Atlanta, she didn't go on that $10 million listing because of the what that's if. That's the biggest strikeout. That's the biggest strikeout, the one that you don't that's swing at. That's the biggest at. strikeout. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest strikeout. You know, my philosophy, you know, I mean, my wife, she'll tell you, I was, I was persistent with her. And if I'd rather ask my wife back when I met her for her number than to think to myself, man, what if, oh, I should have asked her for her number. What if, what if, what if I'd rather she say, I'm not interested or I'm taken, but I could go, I might get kicked in the shins a little bit and feel down for the night, but I, I'm not going to go to bed and, and the next week think, what if, what if I, I left it out I, there. That's true. You know, so that, you know, and, and your last question uh, was very similar. Uh, there's natural overlapping, but it was yeah. about trust. Trust, trust. Now, you know, for this ten and a half million dollar listing, um, it, I don't know. It, I don't know if it's a divorce situation, but I know that he doesn't live at the home. And so I met with her. She's on board. He asked me for five, uh, I guess, basically raving fans, people that I've helped that will talk highly of me, and then which I've had people ask that before, but I've never had anybody ask me the, the second part of his request. And it was, mm-hmm. I'd like you to also give me a name of someone that the relationship ended poorly. They probably didn't have good things to say about you. I'd like to hear okay. about that. And, um, and so I leave that with you because just like a five-star restaurant in, in your town, you know, for every five positive reviews, if there's a one star and that one star rips the service or says something bad, yeah. it brings down those five positives. So just a reminder yeah. to all of us, you know, we are, we are in an industry where people talk, people can leave reviews, good or bad. Do your best. Be positive. Don't, don't be transparent. Don't BS people. Don't right. tell them what they want to hear, but be professional. And, and so the other thing I will let you know that I'm a big proponent of, I, I'm, I want to raise the bar for the industry. I don't know. Michael Jordan uh, just got they, was a great documentary on him called the last dance. And they talked to him about why he never talked politics in the last dance. And he said, because Republicans buy sneakers too. I'm just reminding everybody that are listening to this, that we are in more of a political side, politicized society than ever before, where people won't talk to neighbors because they vote a certain way. You be you. Yeah. That's all I can tell you is you be you. But I, I will tell you, we are in an industry where you might have to bite your lip a little bit and not be as open about your political or religious thoughts um, because Democrats buy big houses and buy small houses. Republicans buy big houses and small houses. Independents buy big houses and small houses. Green, uh, gr- green Party, big, small. Socialists, big, small. My point is, 
that ten and a half million dollar listing, fill in the blank, that hundred and eighty thousand dollar appointment you're going <laughs> next week, they're gonna Google you. They're gonna look you up. Does your social media, does your Facebook brand and look and feel, is it consistent with your LinkedIn? Is it consistent with your YouTube? Is it consistent with your Instagram? I'm just throwing out the four that are that I I personally am most comfortable with and that I brand on. Again, it was Facebook and YouTube, number one and two. Yeah. And then yes. LinkedIn is big for me because that's where a lot of higher net worth C-level executives will go. Again, even if you're not big on LinkedIn, get your profile updated, get your photo, your contact information updated. They might look you up before the appointment. So although you don't think LinkedIn's important, they might. And if they think it's important and they look you up and you don't even have a LinkedIn account, you might not even get the appointment. That makes a lot of sense, Mike. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And again, if you have those questions, others do to review. Again, grow your knowledge and your confidence will grow. I want you to be more confident no matter what you are, what you do for a living. I'll take a more kind person. They'll be more successful than a more skilled person with no confidence. So grow your confidence. Number two is, as, as I mentioned earlier, number two would be, you know, the networking, okay, networking. Join a chamber. Join a chamber. Um, number three, and, and, and it could, these could be interchangeably, okay, start creating videos. Okay, create a YouTube mm-hmm. account for free. Okay, uh-huh. do Facebook Live videos. Okay, uh-huh. and um, so that, that's number three, videos. Number four, attend other people's broker open houses. Do videos, okay. get permission. Be consistent with it. Okay. Number five, I, I didn't talk about number five, but that would also be host open houses. So you're a newer agent. There might be an agent in your market center in your office, Ruby, that's got some high end luxury listing. And you might go to them and, and address the elephant in the room. Hey, Ruby, I saw yeah. you have a couple of really nice listings, Ruby. I'm not sure if the seller is pressuring you to do something different or looks like it's been listed for a while, but I'd be willing to host an open house over at your you're listing at 573 Tennis and Drive, Ruby. Um, oh. You know, all you'd have to do is market it online as an open house. I'll, I'll, I'll take attendance. I'll make sure, you know, disclosures are filled out. But I'd love to find a buyer for you. And now you could leverage other people's open houses until you have your own listings, Ruby. And you could do a preview, do a Facebook Live from there. And now all of a sudden, man weekly, at least it tw- seems like twice a week, I'm seeing Ruby doing videos once at a broker open and the other is at some other pe- person's open house. And they don't even, they, they, they don't care if it's yours or somebody else. They like that you're active and you're putting yourself out there and your dynamic personality and trustworthiness comes through in video and they feel like they already know you. And in the videos, you might just remind anybody that if you know of anybody that is looking to buy or sell, please consider me. Or if you know somebody that their home's on the market, they're not happy, their agent only calls when they want to lower the price and they need a second opinion, have them call me. That's the key. You can't call somebody when they're listed. They can call you. If you're not sure, check with your broker open. Okay. Okay? Yes. Well, this was water for a fire hose. We jam-packed probably two hours of content under an hour, but I wanted to make sure we covered a lot. We were thorough. And just a reminder for everybody that is uh, still listening, uh, our podcast, we, we're on, I think, 112, our 112 podcast. You can go to luxurylistingpodcast.com, luxurylistingpodcast.com to listen to other episodes. We have a free Facebook group. Go to facebook.com forward slash luxury listing specialist. It's a free Facebook page group, a lot of free content. And if we can do anything for anybody and you have anybody that you'd like to recommend for our show, please send an email, Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Michael at marketingluxurygroup.com. Ruby, you've been great. Keep raising well, the bar. Do you. what you're doing, okay? Yes, this is great information. And I thank you for having me on, Mike. You're absolutely, you're absolutely welcome. Everybody, make it a great day. And uh, go make somebody's day. Michael Lafito, Luxury Listing Specialist Podcast. Take care, everybody.